forests of Australia are home to some of the world's most loved animals. But it is the koala which has captured the hearts of people the world over. Eucalypt trees are their life. They sleep in them, fight in them, and mate here. These trees are their escape routes and territorial boundaries, and they feed exclusively on their leaves. No other animal of the Australian bush is so vitally dependent on these forests. of one remarkable koala, its community, and their struggle for survival. In every koala society, there is one male who rules the roost. It's Arnie who's the undisputed leader. A harem of females, and they're young. Marie is carrying Arnie's progeny from last year. At one year of age, this youngster is nearly independent. Lulu is not yet sexually mature and still enjoying her adolescence. Here, most females bear Arnie's young. But it's not only females that concern Arnie. Dennis, a younger male, aspires to overthrow Arnie's dominance. However, the greatest threat to Arnie is exceptional. Well, in all the time I've been working with koalas, and he's just in sheer strength. And the first name that came to mind was uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. So you can catch koalas for 20 years and you see guys like this maybe one or two percent of the time. He's just, uh, yeah, Mr. Cool. While he was moving about during the day, there was no way that he was going to escape the capture process and he took it like a gentleman. He just moved down the tree, relationships between males and females, just so many things. So he is King Koala. And a king must proclaim his kingdom. Arnie marks his territory using a scent gland on his chest. All males have developed this oil-secreting gland by the time they reach sexual maturity. During the breeding season, the gland is more active, and whilst there are no visual signs of a koala's presence, the air is alive with their musky odours. Arnie's scent is his signature, and a warning to other males. These anointed trees are the bedrooms and battlegrounds of koala society. Without them, it would disintegrate. Dennis knows he's in enemy territory. Arnie's home range and its boundaries are all set mark. The odour persists for a long time, probably as much as a year. Even when the animal's dead, the other animals respect those boundaries that have been put in place. is that he's on high nutrient soils with a large number of preferred food trees there. So his home range size is not just a function of habitat quality. It's there because he is who he is. But Arnie's... Oblivious to these new threats, koalas are responding to the onset of spring. Arnie declares his readiness to mate. Dennis moves silently into rival territory, stalking females behind Arnie's back. He pursues Lulu up a tree. 
While Lulu is now ready to mate, she waits loyally for Arnie. The burdens of motherhood are great, so females produce just once a year. Marie's young is Arnie's son. When he's fully independent, Marie will seek out Arnie once again. When they get off, they've lost that little bit of experience that she has. They've got to start learning things for themselves, and it's a very hostile world out there. In just a few weeks, he will leave his mother's home range. Eventually, he may travel as far as 60 kilometres to establish his own territory. It will be a perilous journey. These koalas are surrounded by urban development. There are no guarantees that this youngster will survive or find others of his kind. What the koalas are doing as they travel through that landscape, they're just not looking for food trees. They're looking for Arnie and his type. They're looking for that group because that's what keeps koala society alive and we've destroyed those groups. The animals will now die of old age and the populations will just disappear like lights going out. I have real fears for the long term future. Ever recorded. One of the, this shadowing is a pretty serious game that koalas play. From Dennis's perspective, it's a time of sizing up his opposition and issuing subtle challenges. From Arnie's perspective, it's a test of his endurance, his stamina and his patience. And uh, it's interesting watching the two of them sort of waltz around each other like a pair of boxes in a ring. And uh, I guess underlying all of that is the, the threat that one day the challenge will become real. And there is. Dennis has pursued Marie up a tree. And Arnie is not impressed. Arnie must be vigilant in defending his place in the male hierarchy. The eternity of Marie's young will depend on the outcome of this challenge. The two males fight for the favours of Marie. put in his place this time. One day, he'll try again. But for now, Arnie remains king. On the other side of the forest, Lulu waits patiently for Arnie. But Marie has captured his attention by bellowing. Rare behaviour for females. just free of Arnie's son from last year, but will give birth again in a matter of weeks.
morning, Lulu is tired of waiting and sets out in search of Ang. She follows his distinctive bellows, which can be heard more than one kilometre away. Musky and throatier and, uh, and more robust, probably because of just his sheer size. It uh, gives him that extra resonance he needs to uh, project his voice long distances. In a pristine forest, Lulu's journey would present only a few natural obstacles. Koalas rarely enter the water and swim poorly. But Lulu is determined in her pursuit of Arnie. remain in their natural state and Lulu is faced with the threats of her rapidly changing world and foreign invaders. Cattle mistrust anything unusual. With no trees as refuge, Lulu risks being trampled. killed on the roads every year. By the following morning, Lulu's finally found Arnie. Well, I guess the biggest distance that she travelled was, was certainly in excess of a kilometre, and that was from one end of Arnie's home range to the other. He wasn't there when she needed him to be, and so, as any assertive young woman, she uh, took it upon herself to go and get him, and she did. prefer to mate with Arnie because his genes will give their young the best chance of survival. With the breeding season over, females return to their territories and life in the trees returns to normal. The young conceived from this season's matings are born five weeks later. Like all marsupials, newborn koalas are undeveloped. provides the most effective insulation of all the marsupials. Curling into a ball allows them to retain this warmth. And sleeping is their way of coping with a low nutrient diet of eucalypt leaves. Koalas are able to survive on this exclusive diet by becoming energy misers. But there's no rest for Arnie. Even out of the breeding season, he must patrol his home range and keep an eye on his females. At the same time... He was ten and a half kilograms. And he spent a very hectic breeding season. The need to maintain the boundaries of the home range, fend off subordinate males on the outside, and mate with the females, know where they are. His life would have been so complicated. Now, when you're making those sorts of movements, you're obviously chewing up a lot of energy. Koalas, it is simply to do with the amount of leaves they eat and the energy they conserve. In this forest, there are over a dozen different types of eucalypt. But the koalas choose to feed on only two or three species. Steve has fought hard for the preservation of these food trees. It's early spring and Marie's young, Gidge, is now old enough to come out of her pouch. A 
his digestive system is not yet ready to cope with the fibrous diet of eucalypt leaves. He must first consume a special excreta produced by his mother. Known as PAP, it contains the bacteria needed to start the difficult digestion process. It is instinctively eaten by all koalas of this age. At this stage, Bitch still suckles. He rapidly puts on weight as gum leaves form more of his diet. Koalas have a natural preference for the young succulent leaves, which are more easily digested. When they're not available, they carefully select the most palatable of the mature leaves, using their refined sense of smell. Their digestion is a slow process. While each of these leaves is made up primarily of cellulose and water, they also contain a toxic cocktail of oils. Remarkably, koalas are able to process these compounds, which would be deadly to most other mammals. Finally, the toxins are excreted as bile or urine. It's no wonder that koalas lead such lethargic lives, given that their diet is both toxic and low in energy. As summer approaches, the youngsters spend more time out of the pouch and on their mother's backs. It's an awkward time, both for the young and their tolerant mothers. mother's nipples extend so that they can still be reached from outside the pouch. But for some, the comfort and warmth of the pouch is irresistible. With two mouths to feed, mothers seek out the most nutritious leaves. Travelling overland is a vulnerable time for koalas, and these little jockeys must learn to sit firm. Climbing over and clinging to thick fur is all part of the training for an independent life in the trees. A young koala on its own would be tempting prey for this powerful owl. This evening it has satisfied itself with the young possum and poses little threat. <coughs> Lulu's young Nadu has begun to make short forays on her own. The process of separation is a slow one. It may take weeks for Nadu to venture even a meter from her mother. And for good reason, even short excursions can be dangerous. Goannas relish an opportunity like this. Lulu is 
quick to respond to Nadia's alarm call. Tree tops offer no refuge from the diamond python. While diamond pythons can easily scale trees, Lulu and Nadi are one leap ahead. Natural predators are a fact of life for koalas and don't take a great toll on their numbers. Bushfires are a more serious threat to their survival and have long been a natural part of the Australian landscape. They play a vital role in the regeneration of many plant species, including eucalypts. But while wombats can escape to the safety of their burrows and birds can take to the skies, koalas have nowhere to run. And if you're going to truly move towards a koala from the environment, you cannot have a single dog. Although Steve has forced a ban on dogs within the estate, they hunt nearby. has grown bigger and bolder. The Australian bush comes alive at night. While the tawny frog mouth shows little interest, Ditch finds a potential playmate in this inquisitive squirrel glider. in search of fresh leaves. Neither Marie nor Ditch realize that danger lurks nearby. In her panic, Marie chooses too small a tree. Oh, 
From the little juveniles to the big bull-headed males, there's a great variety of personalities inherent in any population. And it's only when you start working closely with them that you really get a chance to see that. One of the features of all Australian wildlife, but it's particularly noticeable in koalas, is have a great deal of respect for it. Steve won't know the fate of Arnie and his group for many years. But with vital trees protected, cars slowed. But it is the koala which has captured the hearts of people the world over. Eucalypt trees are their life. They sleep in them, fight in them, and mate here. These are their escape routes and territorial boundaries, and they feed exclusively on their leaves. No other animal of the Australian bush is so vitally dependent on these forests. Yet all over it... This is the story of one remarkable koala, his community, and their struggle for survival. In every koala society, there is one male who rules the roost. the undisputed leader. A harem of females, and they're young. Marie is carrying Arnie's progeny from last year. At one year of age, this youngster is nearly independent. Lulu is not yet sexually mature and still enjoying her adolescence. Here, most females bear Arnie's young. But it's not only females that concern Arnie. Dennis, a younger male, aspires to overthrow Arnie's dominance. However, the greatest threat to Arnie is not Dennis, but the change coming to his valley. Arnie is exceptional. Well, in all the time I've been working with koalas, Sam and Arnie is just his sheer strength. And the first name that came to mind was uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger than all the other males in his group. So you can catch koalas for 20 years and you see guys like this maybe one or two percent of the time. He's just, uh, yeah, Mr. Cool. While he was moving about during the day, there was no way that he was going to escape the capture process and he took it like a gentleman. He just moved down the tree uh, to a particular relationships between males and females. Just so many things, so uh, he is King Koala. And a king must proclaim his kingdom. Arnie marks his territory using a scent gland on his chest. All males have developed this oil secreting gland by the time they reach sexual maturity. During the breeding season, the gland is more active, and whilst there are no visual signs of a koala's presence, the air is alive with their musky odours. Arnie's scent is his signature and a warning to other males. 
These anointed trees are the bedrooms and battlegrounds of koala society. Without them, it would disintegrate. Dennis knows he's in enemy territory. Arnie's home range and its boundaries are all set up. The odor persists for a long time, probably as much as a year. Even when the animal's dead, the other animals respect those boundaries that have been put in place. that he's on high nutrient soils with a large number of preferred food trees there. So his home range size is not just a function of habitat quality. It's there because he is who he is. But Arnie's domain will be carved up with roads and houses in less than six months. Oblivious to these new threats, koalas are responding to the onset of spring. declares his readiness to mate. Dennis moves silently into rival territory, stalking females behind Arnie's back. He pursues Lulu up a tree. While Lulu is now ready to mate, she waits loyally for Arnie. motherhood are great, so females produce just once a year. Marie's young is Arnie's son. When he's fully independent, Marie will seek out Arnie once again. When they get off, they've lost that little bit of experience that she has. They've got to start learning things for themselves, and it's a very hostile world out there. In just a few weeks, he will leave his mother's home range. Eventually, he may travel as far as...